today's lesson, we're going to be going into the law and the testimony. And I just want to uh, expound on some things that's in the scriptures. Because, uh, you know, coming up, a lot of philosophy was delivered to me and the belief status of how you can believe in the most high and do things that you would like. Right? But I just want to make sure that, you know, we deliver in the word that saith the most high. I want to start off with uh, Romans chapter 10 for me. Definitely laying away all the philosophy going thus said the most time. Mm -hmm. Book of Romans, chapter Romans chapter 10 verse 1 brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved uh, so it's our heart's desire and prayer to the most high that we save the children of Israel but the only way we do that is making sure that we on the right path right because a lot of times you know we go into Sunday church and all this and that not to single nobody out but we've been delivered things that sound good to us according to how we want to believe in the most high and that's not right. Keep going. Come on. Verse, two. Verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So the most, I mean, not the most, most high. So I feel. Paul is saying right here, for sure. For I bear them record. He's saying, I know for sure that they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to the knowledge. And that's why we're going into the law and to the testimony. Now let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20. But they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. It's not according to thus saith the Most High. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Mm -hmm. And that's what be going on a lot of the time. They just saying what they want to, give a, a feel-good story about what the Most High is saying. But it's, it's not coming out of the word, right? Okay. It says to this word, it is because there is no light. If they're not speaking according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. And we know what that light is, right? That what that light, you know what that light is, right? Let me get that. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light. Mm -hmm. The law is the light. So like Isaiah said, to the law and to the testimony, they speak not according to this word, is because there's no light in it. And that's what we want to make sure that we're doing, speaking according to this word, that's said the most high. We don't want to philosophize our way through anything. We want to make sure that when we coming together as a family on a Sabbath day, we in love, brotherly love. You know what I mean? We want to make sure that we're doing it according to the word. Um, Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 118, and verse 8. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 118, and verse 8. It is better not to it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. Trust in the most high, trust on his word. Everything that we need to know is in here. Don't follow nobody trying to sell you no, no feel-good story, right? So, like, uh, even with the, the traditions of men of, as far as in, like, these holidays and not really going to the word, delivering us the holy days. You got people that, you know what I mean, try to make you feel like, oh, Easter, is, that's the celebration of the resurrection of Christ. But it's, you're not going to say at the most high. You, you philosophizing your way through these scriptures. So now you leave people to trust in you. You know what I mean? And that's not right. Go to Psalms uh, chapter 9 and verse 10. He said, For it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. That's not what we're doing. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 9 and verse 10. 
and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. Mm. And they that know thy name, and hey, we know the Most High name, right? Uh -huh. uh, what's the Most High name, family? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then you can't look. It ain't none of that other stuff we didn't heard. Nah. The Most High delivered his name to Moses, and he said, this is the name you should call me forever. So that's the name we call on. Ain't no reason to philosophize our way through that. That's plain upon tables. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, let's get that. Let's, let's further expand on that. Go to Exodus chapter 3 and start at verse 13. This is the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse I'll say it not. The book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse 13. All right, okay. This is the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? So they want to know because they was leaving Egypt. Egypt had all the, all the money, all the idols. They seen the power that Egypt had. So they thinking that ain't, ain't nothing bigger or better than this. But this is stiff-necked people. So that's why Moses is like, man, what should I say to them? What, what name should I give them? Keep going. Verse 14. Verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Mm -hmm. And he said, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. That's Ahia, Ashar, Ahia. That's the Most High's name. Keep reading. Verse 15. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, mm. and this is my name, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Playing upon tables. This is written in the law for a testimony for us to know to today the Most High name forever is a higher. Huh? 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 Let's, let's jump to the book of Sirach, chapter 19. It's Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha. Verse 18. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 19, also known as Sirach. 19 and what? Verse 18. In verse 18. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. The doctrine of life. We ain't trying to create no new doctrine. We go thus saith the most high, according to the law and the testimony. Keep reading. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Come and what pleases the most high? Doing the commandments. Keeping the commandments. Keep going. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law mm -hmm. and the knowledge of his omnipotency. Come on, that word translates to ultimate power, unlimited power. Read it again. The fear of the Lord is all the wisdom. It's all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. Right? You're not wise if you're not walking in the Most High's law. You may be wise in this world, but if you're not doing thus said the Most High, and you're trying to make it sound good, oh, I believe in God. I know plenty of street people that's like, man, I bro going to heaven. He just passed away, but he had a good heart. That's not thus said the Most High. As hard as these brothers in this truth going, keeping these commandments, the, the way that Christ lived to die on the cross with blameless, it's, it's you, come on, man. It, it got to be thus saith the most high. We're not going to play with it. Go to uh, Mark, Mark chapter 7 and verse, pick it up verse 1. I'll give you an example of how people be trying to philosophize their way through it or just going out the traditions of men. All right. This is the book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. 
Verse 2, and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. They found fault in them, but they don't even understand that the Messiah and the apostles just came from doing miracles, right? You talking about feeding 5,000 men? You talking about going country to country, delivering the word of the Most High? You talking about Christ just came back from walking on the water. Like, it's, it's a lot going on that these brothers just need to sit down and just, hey, can we break bread? And they trying to go after the traditions of men, talking about some, they ain't got washed hands. What you doing with them? Keep going. Verse 3, for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, oft eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Holding the tradition of the elders. And now they trying to trip on the apostles who's walking with the Messiah like, hey, they in sin. Because they trying to hold the traditions of their elders. It's not, there's no commandment saying thou shalt wash his still hands before thou eatest. Come on. Y'all just trying to go, <laughs> y'all just trying to be over-righteous according to y'all people around y'all. Y'all trying to look good to the men. Keep reading. Verse 4. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Then the, Keep going. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? Why y'all ain't doing what we've been doing? Why y'all ain't doing what the elders are doing? Keep going but eat bread with unwashing hands. Mm -hmm. He answered and said unto them, well hath Isaiah prophesied of you? Hypocrites, as it is written. As it is written. So now Christ's gonna get the tripping, cause he like, look, y'all trying to seem overly righteous according to the tradition of your elders. But if we go and thus saith the most high, let me get that out of Isaiah 29 and 13 before we read it right here. Isaiah 29 and 13. If we go thus saith the most high, y'all tripping. Y'all going, y'all trying to be overly righteous right here. Hold that, what you got though? Uh, yeah, I got it. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, and verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me. Isaiah, when ye shall. Isaiah 29, 13. Oh, I'm good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> oh, here you go. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, and verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. Mm -hmm. So they say they love God. They say they love Christ. Right? Keep going. And with their lips do honor me, mm -hmm. but have removed their heart far from me. Mm -hmm. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You don't got to keep the commandments. You got to keep the tradition of the elders. Why y'all ain't coming to church on Christmas? Why y'all ain't coming to church on Easter? Why you not washing your hands before you eat? Go back to uh, Mark chapter 7. Pick up verse 6. This lesson is to the law and to the testimony, right? So we know that the prophets is walking in the law. And those things written aforetime is for our learning, for a testimony. So this is why I went back to Isaiah real quick for y'all, real quick. Go ahead. Verse 6. Yeah. Chapter, Mark chapter 7, verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you? Hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. The commandments of men. You, talk, you holding them them traditions of the elders. Well, we been doing it, why y'all acting different? Nah, because it ain't thus said the most high. We coming back to our heritage, according to the law and the testimony, right? Keep going. Verse eight, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. You putting the commandments of the most high away. We not keeping the Feast of Tabernacle, Purim, the Feast of First Fruits. We not keeping these high holy days. We doing things that we would like to do because it feel good. It's the tradition that we've been doing. Keep going. As the washing of pots and cups 
and many other such like things ye do. Verse 9, and he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. That's according to the law, right? Keep going. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corbin. It is Corbin. That word translates to a consecrated gift. So we know according to the law, it says, honor thy father and thy mother. And whosoever curses father or mother, let him die to death. But the Pharisees were saying, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corbin. I'm straight. I'm good. I got my sacrifices I'm putting up. I ain't got to honor my father or mother. Keep reading. It is Corbin, it is Corbin that is to say a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. He's saying I'm straight, I ain't got to do it, I'm free from that law. I, I put up my sacrifices, let me get an example of that real quick. Let me go to Leviticus chapter 1, All right? Because you were supposed to make, you were supposed to make an atonement for your sacrifice, but atonement, we know when you put up a sacrifice, you're supposed to repent completely from that. Uh, chapter 1, verse 1? Uh, start at verse 2. To repent, you got to change your way, right? Go ahead. Uh, it's the book of Leviticus, Leviticus, chapter 1, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. Keep going. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will mm -hmm. at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make an atonement for him. An atonement. You're supposed to purge that away. You're not supposed to just keep bringing a sacrifice thinking that you're going to make yourself righteous. Because you know the law, but you're not honoring your father and your mother. You rather look good in front of the tabernacle, in front of the sanctuary, putting up sacrifices. So going back, it says verse 11 in Mark 7. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corbin. That is to say, a gift. That's that sacrifice. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free and suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect mm -hmm. through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. And it's plenty of things they do just like this. You, you putting off the word of the Most High because of your traditions. We're using the law against the law, but it's like you in, you in unrighteousness, bro. You're not going to honor your father and your mother, but you rather look good for them over there and put up these sacrifices. You're not understanding it at all. Let's go to uh, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. And a lot of us, we, we was doing this because me growing up, I didn't really have any foundational, I'm going to say belief, but I didn't really have anything to lean on as far as my understanding with my relationship with the Most High. Come. Right? Um, I just grew up thinking that, oh man, you know, you believe in God. I always call myself a Christian, but it was never according to the word. I was never studying. Um, I thought the nation of Islam looked like they was cool. But when you come in this word and you get the foundation, you find out the order, right? All that stuff is wickedness. And it ain't no need to be tossed to and fro. You come uh, straight to the most high. Let me give y'all a little uh, testimony of myself, right? I was rocking this Buddha piece, and I'm thinking I'm cool. At the same time, I believe in God. You know what I mean? And can't nobody tell me nothing, because me, I believe in God. But one of my brothers delivered a video, hey, I think you should look into this. You know what I mean? Uh, there's some wickedness behind it. I keep putting it off, keep putting it off, boom. I finally sit down and, finally sit down and listen to the video, and a lot of knowledge come out behind it, and I'm like, man, okay, first step, I take that away, all right? <clears throat> I repent from that. I repent from that. And now I want to know more. If I'm so sold on this, 
and I don't know no truth behind it. How much more am I doing wrong according to the word of the Most High? Now it's time to dive into this word. You feel know I me? Mean? It's time to really get a strong foundation. So that was my first step. Just to share that example before we bring this First Timothy out, right? Give me that First Timothy four and verse fifteen. This is the book of Timothy. This is First Timothy chapter four. This is the book of First Timothy chapter four and verse thirteen. Fifteen. He said fifteen. In verse fifteen. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself holy. Give thyself holy to them. Holy unto them, right? So I was sitting there. I'm sitting there. This is my own example, right? And I'm like, dang. If this is some some wickedness, how much more? So I'm meditating on it. I'm just like, okay, boom. Separate myself from that. You got to come to the word. I come to the word. Now it's time to really sit here and meditate on what the Most High is saying. Keep going. Start at the top, verse 15. Meditate upon these things, give thyself holy to them, that thy, that thy profiting may appear to all. Mm -hmm. That the profiting may appear to all. Boom, I got the knowledge now. I done sat here, and now everybody can see, okay, these took that off. These starting to walk in these commandments, right? Keep going, verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Unto the doctrine, the doctrine of the word, right? Keep going. Continue in them, for in doing things, thou shalt both. So I got for, for doing this. Okay. Let's start from the top. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Boom. Free from that idolatry that I thought was cool. I'm thinking that it's wisdom in that piece. You pat the head, you get wisdom. You rub the belly, it bring you wealth. That's wickedness. That's not thus said the most high according to the law and the testimonies the prophets gave us. You read them, you read them testimonies the prophets gave, man, the most high was slaughtering them idols. You're not dealing with that. Right? So now I got the knowledge. It say, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now I can let the other people know that we supposed to be alike. Hey, bro, that Buddha is some is some wickedness behind that. You might want to look into that. Right? And then further in their knowledge, I can bring them to the law if that if it be the will of the most high. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 1. Give an example of these ordinances that we didn't thought that was right according to the most high. It's not. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 1. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. You give an example again like uh, Leviticus was talking about. You're supposed to go put up that sacrifice. Keep going. Verse 2. For there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded in the tables of the covenant and over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot know, I mean, we cannot now speak particularly. Verse six, now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God. But into the second, 
with the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. He had to go make an atonement. That was the law. He had to go cleanse, right? Uh, for himself and for the people. Keep going. Verse 8. Yeah. Again, in verse 8, the Holy Ghost is the signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. They couldn't imagine anything greater than what they saw because they were so caught up in the law. It wasn't, it, not much spiritual was coming out of it. They just making void the commandment of the Most High, holding the traditions. Keep going. Verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices mm -hmm. that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience as pertaining to the conscience so you just putting up blood sacrifice at the blood sacrifice and you're not even attaching yourself to the spiritual side of you it's supposed to be by the blood to cleanse you right keep going verse 10 yeah which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Now, I, I've heard somebody say these carnal ordinances are only the commandments, but they're not understanding the whole context of this, right? Keep going. Verse 11, but Christ being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats, and of calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Mm -hmm. That's spiritual. They, they couldn't imagine that. Keep going. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh. If those things can make you clean, keep going. How much more shall the blood of Christ, mm, the only begotten of the Father, how much more the blood of the Messiah can make you clean if those bulls, goats, and those heifers, according to the, the, the sacrifice in front of the tabernacle or the sanctuary, if they can make you clean, how much more the blood of the Messiah? Keep going, verse 14. Who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Mm. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Huh, because we go up a couple verses, right? It was saying that, let me see, let me find it. Right here, boom, verse 9. That could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. You go up there, put up the sacrifice, all right, cool, I look, I look good. You forgetting the spiritual side, right? You still thinking about that sin. You thinking because you did it, I'm about to go back and do it. All I need is a sacrifice. And this is what he was talking about when he said, man, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you? Because y'all just thinking that, oh, the law, boom, I ain't, got no, I ain't got no spiritual side. Come on. You got to have both. If you repent, you got to sincerely repent according to the law and the testimony. These things are written for us to learn from. These are, these are examples. Let me get the definition of testimony real quick. It says a person's will, especially the part relating to personal property. The second definition says something that serves as a sign or evidence of a specified fact, event, or quality. I just wanted to bring that out before we keep reading in verse 15 real quick. Go ahead. Verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Who? Christ. Huh. That by me, or the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament. Mm-hmm. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Uh, Verse 16. For where a testament is there must also of a necessity be the death of the test testator. It got to be by the blood. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator living. Because uh, when Christ was here... They had the Old Testament. They knew that by a blood sacrifice, it would make you clean, but they couldn't even imagine the fact that this is the Messiah, right? 
It says, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. And we know that's Christ. For a testament is a force after men are dead. It didn't hit them until the Messiah died. Whoa, okay, according to the law and these testimonies, this is who the, this is who the Messiah is. This is who the book been talking about. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator lived because they couldn't even imagine the fact that this man right here walking next to us, looking just like us, gonna come in the glory of the Most High. Keep going, verse 18. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For men, I mean, for, sorry, for when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law. Mm. According to what? According to the law. Mm -hmm. Let me get his definition real quick of testimony. Testimony, definition. It says, a formal written or spoken statement, especially one given in a court of law. Can you bring that up from the top again, verse 19? For when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, Keep going. he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. By the blood. Keep going. Saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So we are glorying in the fact that the Messiah came. We now have the grace to have to 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 get it right, basically, to understand the knowledge of the law. But you go to the law, the first five books of Moses. You come to the prophets, the testimony of the Most High, putting everything in its order. And he said, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. We got that ultimate sacrifice. That the Messiah, he died for us. We're not going up to the altar no more to put up no sacrifice. And though we have the Messiah, you don't just, oh, well, Christ died for me. I can do this. Pastor said it's good. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to sin. I'm going to keep sinning. That's not, that's not, that's at the most high. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. The only way you take on this blood of Christ, you repent and be baptized. Let's go to the book of Luke and chapter 10 and verse 24. That's the book of Luke chapter 10 and verse 24. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Time, because in today's time, we see it all. I mean, for the eyes that can see, and the ears that can hear, the things that, Ob that Obadiah was talking about, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, laying a nest amongst the stars, you think the prophets can imagine that? They couldn't imagine something laying a nest amongst the stars. So today we see it all. We see the, the RFID chips coming, which we know. Come on. We see the, the space shuttles, the satellites going out there. These things they didn't have during those times. They couldn't imagine those things. That's why I say, for I tell you that many of the prophets and the kings have desired to see those things, which we see and have not seen them, but that a lot of them still believe. Right? They knew that they had the law. They knew that by their testimony, the Most High was dealing with them. They said, and they have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Keep reading that verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Because they was always trying to come to Christ and philosophize their way off. Bro, I don't know what you're talking about. This ain't the Messiah. Da, 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 da. Keep going. Verse 26, he said unto him, what is written in the law, how readest thou? Mm. How you take it what's written in the law? Uh -huh. Well, you're understanding that. You trying to see how you get eternal, eternal life? Go to the law. Keep going. And he answering 
And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. So you, you're saying it all, right? Keep going. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. Mm -hmm. Keep going. But he, willing to justify himself, said, that philosophy. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It ain't to the law and to the testimony no more. You already said it, but it got to be some more to it. 29 again, read it again. But he, willing to justify himself, mm -hmm. said unto Yeshua, and who is my neighbor? And Yeshua answered, saying, and Yeshua answering, said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him. So now Christ's going to give him an example, right? A testimony. He gonna give him an example according to the law. Keep going. We stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. The Levite, we know that these, these is Israelites. These are supposed okay. to be brothers that's in the law, right? They're supposed to have that brotherly love. Keep going. 33, verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Somebody they would have considered as a Gentile. Keep going. And went to him and bound up his, work, his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the marrow, when he departed, he took out two pence. So I'm going to start at the top. Verse 35, and on the marrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. So he didn't hook him up with somewhere to stay. He didn't gave him a tab. He didn't gave him some food, and he hooking him up, right? While his brothers, supposed to be his brothers, walking right by him. Keep going, verse thirty-six. Which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Which one of these you think is his neighbor? You trying to you trying to justify yourself out, out of this brotherly love? You trying to say, well, all I gotta do is this. But if you ain't got this, come on. So which one of these is you saying is your neighbor? Keep reading, verse thirty-seven. And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Shia unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Come on, I gave you an example by the law, and I gave you a testimony. There ain't no need for no confusion. There's no need for no philosophizing. It, come on, they—they they was the Pharisees was always trying to come and stir up some strife between Christ because they thinking that oh bro you don't know what you're talking about. But Christ was he was so slick he had cut them with the law and they ain't even know it because they were so carnal minded thinking that they putting up these sacrifices and we straight we overly righteous but you lacking that brotherly love you ain't got the fruits of the spirit you ain't operating according to the law and the testimony. Let's go to uh, the book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 14. This is the book of Acts, <clears throat> chapter 24, and verse 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, mm. so worship. I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Mm. So the things written in the law and the prophets. We know the things written the four times for our learning, right? They try to say that, oh, well, them Hebrews, they call us heresy because they saw about the law. They don't even know how spiritual we is. Y'all don't even know how spiritual we is. That's the reason why we keep the law. We got the faith and the works. All praise to the Most High. We was in darkness also following the philosophies. 
But according to the law and the testimony, we reading, we studied up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we learning. We learning how to how to show the Most High that we are grateful for His Word and His law and His testimony. And uh, hey, man, I'm I'm grateful to be here. How about y'all? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's that's pretty much all we got right there. I'm gonna conclude it right there. Any questions? And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess flicked thee. And I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. And I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time, while I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among 